Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome to Titanium Man Garage. Today I'm going to be replacing the brakes on this thing and the rotors. The rotors are pretty shot. I'll show you what I got. Alright, so as you can see, this is pretty grooved out. I'm going to be taking the, the caliper off. There's no, absolutely no brake pads left. So before I go ahead and uh, remove the caliper, I'm going to go ahead and remove this. The hub cover and I want to drain the, the fluid. And while that's, draining, while that's draining, I'll take the, the caliper off. Pop that off. Tell this hub fluid hasn't been changed in a while. This is really dirty. It's not coming off too easy. And there we go. And it looks like it's all watery. Let that drain for a little bit. All right, so I know you're not going to be able to see this back here, but there is a Allen wrench. Uh, not that goes in the back here. You want to loosen that up first. I like to do it while it's on the machine because it's easier to, to loosen. And you want to remove that so you can uh, push your brake pads in and out. Like so. And I'll show you why I did that. So next thing I'm going to take the two bolts off the back the half inch socket. Like so. And we're going to remove the caliper. Oops, I'm going to be right in the oil. All right, so the reason I, I removed that locking nut on the back of the caliper is so this pushes in <coughs> and then it, and the brake pads come off. And before I take that one off, I use a C-clamp and push that piston in. And if the, uh, the piston on the caliper, it looks pretty bad. I'll spray a little PB blaster on there just so it loosens everything up. Uh, Lubes it up. Just piston back in because you're going to need room for the new brake pads once you put them in. Alright, so that's all the way in. So before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and remove this hub because this is really, really messed up. All right, so first things first, there is a pin in here, the cotter pin you got to remove. Time to get lucky. Comes out. All 
So I was driving this thing and I noticed the brakes were kind of felt uh, on the handbrake, it would squish in and out, squish in and out, like uh, I could tell the rotors were warped. I just picked up this machine a little while ago from a kid. And this is the one I rebuilt the motor on. So I put the plow on, get ready for our Arctic temperatures in Wisconsin pretty soon. There's supposed to be a big snowfall. So I'm gonna make sure this all works good. Remove the, the nut. There's a washer. And then there's a bearing. So I usually just pull this out. There's the bearing. Ooh, that is bad. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so while I'm at it, I'm gonna check the this is the Hillard clutch that engages your four-wheel drive. There's a plate in your magnetic coil. Make sure this is lined back up correctly. Otherwise, your four-wheel drive won't work. There we go. And I got a used hub in good condition. It's not grooved out. That'll work nice. Go ahead and slide that back in. When you slide that back in, make sure you don't bump this or move this because those tabs, if they get bent or if this thing holds this or if this whole thing shifts while you're putting this together, those pins are going to bend and you're going to mess up your Hillard clutch and then your four wheel drive won't work. Be careful. Another good idea too is if you're using a used hub um, on the back side, there is a seal. You might want to replace that. Go ahead, put the bearing back in. Washer. So now this nut is supposed to be torqued down. I think it was like 90 to 100 foot pounds. I don't do that because with these used machines, things wear. And so the one time I did it, I cranked it to the proper torque specs and then this would not move. So I just snug it up until I think it feels good and then line up the, see now that's too tight. There, that's good right there. Now my uh, castle nut's lined up with that hole and I can put the pin back in. I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not, it's just the way I do it. Uh, I said just from past experiences, if I torqued it to the correct spec, it would not spin. And with the castle nut and this cutter pin, it'll keep everything locked in place. Feels pretty good, it's not winning in and out. I like it. <clears throat> Alright, then we can put our cover back on and fill this up with hub fluid. Alright guys, so with that uh, stop not moved, push this in. We're gonna go ahead and install the brakes. Back one, like that. One started, the other 
and shove it in there. Make sure these, this bracket is pressed back. So when you put the other one in, you got room. Just like so. You can kind of move this out. Usually, oops. Usually like to start the nut in the back before I install it, just so I know it's in there and I can see it. That's my Allen wrench. Get started. There. Three quarters of the way in. I get to slide this back on. Put my bolts back in place. That's the tricky part. Just to show you guys what I'm talking about. Got the bolts back here, one here, one on the other side. Go ahead and tighten that up. The bottom one. And I'll go ahead and snug up that stop nut back here. This boy will be ready to go. I just got to fill that up with hub fluid yet. And I should have good brakes. Gotta push the pistons back and have to pump the brakes up. And you might have to possibly crack the bleeder screws open on the back and, and bleed them. So here you go guys, if you ever want to learn how to put brake pads in and a new rotor, this is how it's done. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe. I've got uh, hundreds of Polaris repair videos out there. Thanks for watching.